climbing. Uh, Shannon's been, uh, um, well, I don't know if you want. I'm, I think it, maybe it's not the right place. Yeah, it? <laughs> I don't know. Go Sorry, guys. All right. Yeah, this can stay so. just with between us. I think we should, yeah, I think yeah. we'll just we'll keep going under the cover. So. We should just leave that for now. Literally. <laughs> literally. Um, what do you think will happen to the human race in 100 years? That's just coming on the live chat. Well, if you have an extra three hours, Jared has a really good opinion. I do uh, have some thoughts on this, but it would be a little bit too time-consuming. Maybe we could have a, a, a private chat between all of us a little later <laughs> at uh, jaredletter.com when we came out. Yeah. Uh, notes from the outer net. But, but I, I do think in 100 years, it's interesting to think about where we were 100 years ago, and that True. can give us some indication of the possibilities uh, of 100 years from now. And if, roughly 100 years ago, maybe 110 years ago, um, we had just had the very first manned flight, you know, uh, less uh, about, what was it, uh, even uh, 50, 60 years ago, everyone was watching a black and white television. Uh, you know, we put a man on the moon only in, uh, you know, what was it 68? Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the advancement of technology and the kind of exponential rate of uh, growth and, and development and progress, it's pretty mind-boggling to think what in a hundred years from now, yeah. I would I would say it's a guarantee that we'll probably be living uh, uh, outside of this planet. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, if you look at population uh, next to the amount of resources we have, we'll probably have to be searching for resources outside of our planet as well. But that's just a little MySpace uh, chat. <laughs> so yeah, uh, sorry, that's, go there. That's <laughs> I'll rein it back in now. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of the echelons um, chatting in. Um, mm. Tell me more about the echelons, <laughs> Jerry. Your, your, your fans. Well, you, I would just say I would, I would encourage you to be careful right now okay. as we tread upon a uh, very, you know, hallowed ground. This is a de delicate topic. You know, this it's, is, a, it's basically it's a mafia the, that you can draw. It requires a saying. certain level of respect. Yeah, yeah okay. just keep that it's, in mind. It's for, it's for the people who understand. And yeah. uh, I actually mean that quite seriously. It's been, from the very beginning, we've had a special relationship with the believers, the people that have joined us in, in this adventure. Yeah. And uh, I, I, there's been, yeah, I, I think, an understanding between us and and them. And, uh, you know, this, this shared experience has been, uh, you know, the defining element of, of, of everything. You do seem to be, I must say, of all, um, all the bands out there, you do seem to be one of the best bands at, like, communicating with fans and staying close to fans and having, like, a, a dialogue with them and not just sort of, like, you to the world of fans, but you to the, sort of, well, the echelons in each country, you know, and, like, having sort of quite um, cherished relationships with those fans the world over, it's quite... Sweet. Well, I, I think it, it really, I appreciate that, and, but really the, the credit probably goes to the echelon themselves, because they're yeah. the other half of that conversation, they've always been very active, they, 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 they teach us, they inspire us, and they, they are a constant source of, uh, of uh, education and inspiration, and you know, we're, we're always uh, eternally grateful for we love that them. support. We love them indeed. Yeah. We've actually got the Irish echelon. Top of the uh, afternoon to you. Um, they ask, is Mr. Nobody coming out in Ireland? This is at Jared. I don't know. You know, when you make a film, they just, they, they kind of kick you to the curb and, yeah. you know, you just, you, you end up walking down the street and see a poster or something. <laughs> so, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Um, uh, Lenzi's on the live chat, uh, they're saying, At Tomo, thanks for wearing my bracelets. You're welcome. Very nice. Who gave you those bracelets? That person did. Is this the same one? And is it, uh, are they called Lenzi? I, I don't remember the names as well as I do faces. Where but, was uh, that? This was in uh, Copenhagen, I think. You, Shannon gave me this. Someone gave yeah. it to him to give yeah. me. It was in Copenhagen. I don't know. I don't remember where I got this one, but I know that this one came from our wonderful Japanese contingent. Wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Love that. You know, gifts, love, they'll accept anything. It's abundant. And anything they won't accept, so uh, they can send on to us, I suppose. Toma likes, Toma likes wheat germ. Wheat germ. So now loves wheat germ. Yeah. Yogurt. Of wheat germ. He'll actually, if you bring a good cake, most then to eat that or cookies, cookies, yeah. yeah. Uh, or if you bring a griddle, I will cook for you. Dark chocolates, yeah, all that stuff's great. Shoes, 
Socks, clean socks. <laughs> yeah, clean socks. <laughs> Just to wear. Any box. Good at laundry. Yeah, we can help each other out there. Um, I've got Alex uh, left a question on the blog. Who slash what is your main inspiration when writing songs and performing? You know, I get inspired a lot by books and visual art. And, uh, you know, I, what about you guys? I'm going to take my jacket off. You know, I, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar. I get inspired you know, in, in the same ways through uh, conversations and through just life experience, everything I've uh, you know, witnessed and, and been a part of throughout my life. I get inspired when Jared writes uh, some songs, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of songs that he writes. Only, only he's a couple, written a few. Only a couple. <laughs> it's been a couple of songs he's written. Yeah, not bad. That's inspiring me, you know. Uh, I get inspired by the process, definitely life in general, everyday happenings. Who are your sort of uh, idols in your respective uh, disciplines? Settle down. Um, I get inspired by our, yeah. our family of fans and friends around the world. I, 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 yeah, I really do. I, you know, we're 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 constantly receiving uh, all kinds of information, and I, I always I always think it's a great source of uh, encouragement, mm -hmm. support, information. But when we were working on this record, we had a, a pretty combative time with certain parts of it. The creative part of it was that it was a pretty healthy uh, battle, which I think is yeah. important. But there are other things that, that happened and that have been widely talked about we don't need to get into now. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sweet Suicide Clothing, hello. Um, <laughs> ask, you've been through many problems as a band like your lawsuit against your record deal, and as an individual uh, like Jared gaining and losing the weight from the movie, Chapter 27, but do you stick together through these times? Do you argue much? Here we are, together. It's true. Together so that, again. That's the answer. That's the testament. Together <laughs> forever. Together so forever. On the couch together. Um, what is Tomo's new tattoo? What do you mean? Uh, have you got a new tattoo? I have the triad tattoo. Oh, that's nice. He also has one. I don't want to talk about that one. It was a big Sharon, it's a giant tattoo on his neck. It's daytime. Yeah, I got Maybe one it's not best to wear that one. I don't think I'm going to be showing that one to anybody. Um, Cherry asks on the live chat, what's your, uh, what's the favorite gift you've received from a fan? We've gotten so many wonderful things, you know, I've been given, uh, some, I've been given a, a couple of great books recently. I've, I read a book that someone gave me, The Wolf, uh, The Philosopher and the Wolf, uh, about a teacher who had um, a wolf and uh, uh, for 11 years and, and uh, his experience in the relationship with this animal and what it taught him about life. And someone gave me War and Peace recently, which I've never read. Wow. And, uh, That's a challenge, that is. Yeah, I thought that was a great gift as well. I like books. I've been given some really interesting... I got a really old copy of Machiavelli once, and I thought mm -hmm. that was, was an old leather copy. It was really beautiful. Nice. Yeah. What about you guys? I like to read uh, children's books. <laughs> so the, the gifts that, like. that he gets are, are children. Is that what you're saying? I like to read children's books to teach me English better. <laughs> Bob will run. Bob yeah, has fun. That's Bob good. will run and have fun. Is that from Bob the Builder? Bob will run and have fun. Bob the Builder in the sun. <laughs> yum yum. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Don't be dumb dumb. <laughs> is is English your first language? Because you're from. Um, I was born in Sarajevo. Uh, yeah. uh, English is my first language, I would say. But I speak fluent Croatian. Nice. Do you go back to Croatian much? I just did the other day from Vienna. I did a spontaneous kind of uh, magical, crazy road trip with three people I did not know. He came backstage about <laughs> two in the morning, one morning. He goes, guys, I'm going Croatian. He said, okay. <laughs> just leave cool. us some contact information and yeah. then hopefully make it to the next show. But I saw him uh, talking with these five or six guys from Croatia, this full-on debate, laughing, talking. And, you know, <laughs> it, it was, it was a lot, one of the loudest conversations you've ever heard. And We're I asked, loud people. I asked the guy, I said, how's this Croatian? They said, it's yeah, perfect. It's <laughs> perfect. After all these yeah. years, he's been in America for so long. Nice. I couldn't believe he was talking to everybody. Good to hear. You know, please be great time. Yeah.